Surely God is in this place. Help me notice. Good morning and welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Sharon Ballantyne and I am the Intentional Interim Minister serving Fort Massey United Church here in Halifax. We are so glad that you are here joining us in person in the sanctuary or virtually through our YouTube channel. Everyone is needed, valued, and belongs. Thank you for choosing to join us for this Sunday, August 14th, 2022 on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We extend a special welcome to the Congregation of St. Matthews working, worshiping with us today and throughout August and to all visitors that are with us. Let's be open to what God is revealing to each of us today as we explore the cloud of witnesses and think about living by faith. I invite John now to play some quiet music as Lorraine we'll comes forward to light our candle this morning. If you are viewing virtually, I invite you to light a candle at home or just hold the light of Christ in your heart. We light the Christ candle as a reminder of the light and love of Jesus shining in us, through us, and around us, praying for the well-being of all who share the spaces where we live, work, worship, and have our being, for peace and love to be shared. Let the light and love of Christ bring peace throughout all creation, that in faith, Let's let Christ's light shine. We acknowledge that we are worshiping on the Mi'kmaq in the lands of the unceded territories of the Mi'kmaq. We live, work, play, pray on these unceded territories. We acknowledge the treaty lands and the unceded territories of wherever people are worshiping. We offer thanks and gratitude for continued stewardship and care today from the past and into the future of our first peoples. We continue on journeys of learning and growing together seeking to live in peace, harmony, and friendship with all peoples and all of creation. May it be so. Please join me now in the responsive call to worship. The words are printed on the screen and in your bulletin. God be with you. We gather in faith, thankful, for the cloud of witnesses. I invite you to just get comfortable where you are seated, opening your body, your mind, and your spirit to the divine. Feel yourself grounded with the earth beneath you, opening your heart in community as we gather in breathing God's presence, connecting us with each other, knowing that this moment is unique, never to be repeated, and it joins us together. And as we exhale our breath, we are releasing tension, anxiety, anything that is distracting us from connecting with the divine. Let's just breathe it in together and release your breath into silence. Most gracious God, we greet you once again in this sacred space. We have come because we needed to be reminded of your love and your guidance for our living. We look to models of faith 
and look to deepen our relationship with you, we know that we need your loving presence with us. So we come in prayer. We are listening, listening for your word to speak to our hearts and reveal your desires to each one of us. God, we've come thirsty, thirsty for your spirit, living water, bubble up from inside us and lead us toward deep spirituality. God, we've come hungry, hungry for community, bread of life, feed our spirits, and lead us towards bold discipleship in community. God, we've come searching, searching for wholeness, source of life. Guide us and lead us toward daring justice. God, feed, nourish, and prepare us to be your church in the world. Lead us in love and in this time of worship, open us fully to you. In Jesus' name, amen. And it's time to raise our voices in song. I invite us to raise in body or spirit as we sing together the song, God of the Sparrow, Voices United 229. <laughs> Uh, 
my name is Bureng Tabuma. Uh, thanks to John Walter on the organ and the piano today. Uh, to Jade Frazier, our soloist. Uh, to Cliff Valentine, who is recording this service. Uh, to Colleen Estabrooks at the back, who is our, who's ushering today. And also leading the organization uh, of, lemon, of lemonade available after worship today. Sharon's message today is entitled by faith. Uh, please refer to the announcements uh, in your bulletin for details uh, of the announcements, but here are some highlights. Uh, please join us for lemonade outside the Tobin Street entrance uh, following worship. Summer Sounds at Barrington uh, 2022 concert series uh, takes place each Tuesday at St. Matthews from 12.15 to 1 p.m. A reminder, we are continuing to collect uh, poster stamps as part of our outreach through the Canadian Bible Society supporting prison ministries. You will find donation boxes at both the Tobin and Queen Street entrances. Uh, please see Bill Gillis if you have any questions. It's a Sunday, Sunday, on August 21st. Uh, following worship, please join us for an ice cream social as we spoil our lunch a little. Or think, or think of it as a dessert first experience. The worship team will meet on Tuesday, uh, August 23rd, starting at 7.30 on Shannon Zoom. Uh, the ordination of Calvin Burt will take place on September the 5th at 11 o'clock in the morning at Sharon Presbyterian Church, uh, Dean, Nova Scotia. Uh, that's in Muscadabot. Uh, we're all invited to celebrate uh, this former student minister at Fort Massey uh, on this ordination into the Presbyterian Church. Uh, my wife, Clarissa, and I will be attending, so if anyone needs a ride, uh, we're happy to take up to three people with us, if you want to come. Uh, so please let me know. Um, a reminder that we hope uh, to have an outside bake sale on, September, September, on Saturday, September 10th. All contributions, including, including preserves and jams and jellies, are welcome. Uh, please contact Kathy Evans with questions. Uh, please contact Sharon if you have any announcements you wish to be included in upcoming newsletters uh, or worship. We extend birthday wishes to Sheila Sinclair, celebrating tomorrow, uh, to Roxanne Tupper Grant, celebrating on Tuesday, and to Colleen Estabruch, celebrating on Thursday. Uh, happy birthday to all of you. Uh, blessings and our best wishes to all who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations this week. Uh, please join me as we say the new creed together, affirming our faith. Uh, the words on the screen and in our bulletin. Uh, please stand with the We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God. It was created in His grace. It was come and eat us the word of To reconcile and make new. We were sinners and others by us. We trust in God. We are called to be the church. To celebrate God's presence. To live with respect and patience. To love and serve others. To seek justice and resist people. To proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our God. In life in the day, in life beyond the day, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Today in our Discipleship and Minute for Mission moment, I am going to invite us to be thinking about the pedal of the sense of sharing faith. Some of us find it really hard to speak about our faith to other people who 
We don't know if they are people of faith or not. To know what to say, to know what to do if someone wants you to pray, what words do you use? If you're trying to look in the Bible to find a story or a relevant verse, sometimes those kinds of things can seem daunting. But really, sharing our faith is about being present. It's about caring. You might not have the particular spiritual words you think, but when you show up, when you sit there and you listen, when you drop by with a card or a note or a phone call and checking in, that is our faith at work. Most of us can probably do a little better job of being a little more explicit, especially if we compare ourselves, that we are sharing our faith. Being invitational to come to worship can be a little bit trickier for some of us. However, I think we all believe that we try to live by faith. We hold up people in our thoughts and in our prayers. We reach out. Now, we may not be as committed as some of our siblings in Christian faith, but we have so many ways that we do share our love. Today, perhaps, as you go through worship, there'll be a song, maybe a verse or even a word from scripture, a conversation, a story, a sense of welcome, a sense of well-being, whatever it is that bubbles up from within you, maybe even a conversation while you're enjoying lemonade. Is there something you can take away to share with another person about how worship is meaningful to you? I encourage you to reach out this week and share some small experience of your worship. Invite someone perhaps to come and share an ice cream next Sunday. We'll be having the ice cream about 11.30 and even if they're not comfortable, to come into the sanctuary for the time of worship together. Invite them to pop by for the fellowship time together. It's all a part of our sharing faith. As we think about all of the petals, as we share faith, we share our discipleship, we make a difference, and we are thankful. We engage in many diverse ministries, sharing mission and service. We are influenced and inspired by those who have come before us. We give thanks for all who've been models of faith, from the stories that we read, to our mentors and models, all the people who touch our lives. We give and we receive. We share time, talent, and treasure. And we know that God uses us to make a difference. We can share financially through pre-authorized remittance, through envelopes, e-transfer, and in all the ways that we support various ministries. We are grateful for all the ways that we contribute this morning, financial donations can be left in the plate at either entrance as you choose, but in a gesture of giving and receiving of our time, our talent and treasure, all of our gifts. According to your comfort, I invite you to just pretend that you are holding that offering plate, that gesture of giving and receiving with deep gratitude, our offering will now be received.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, known by many names and ways, thank you for the resilience of your love, for the many faithful witnesses whose stories have mentored and taught us. Thank you for the many ways that we offer our gifts. Help us to keep ourselves focused on Jesus in showing love the best ways that we can. Bless us and use all of our gifts, all that we say and do, that we might be living witnesses of faith, committed to sharing faith and love here and throughout the world. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. A time for a young and young at heart. So, I know we're in a digital era and it's so easy to take some photos on our phone. You might not know that they've even become so technically advanced of things that my phone will actually talk to me and help me to take a picture. I'm still not very good at it, but it can be done. But my question is, do you have a photo album or albums? And are some of them really old? Do they have pictures of people from before you were born? And do you ever look through the pages? Maybe remembering the people, the events, the stories you've been told, asking about them. And if you look at those pictures, you probably even find some mystery people. That is the folks in the photos that nobody quite remembers who they were. Sometimes we might connect to stories about our family or particular activities. Or maybe you just kind of remember, you make it up a little bit because the picture is that strong connection to help you. Those photos have taken long before you came along. Maybe you look at them and you hear stories of, oh, you kind of look like that person or your voice is very similar to that person. Oh, and you know what? you kind of like the same things that this other person did. Maybe you can imagine pictures of when you were really small, being held by a parent or a particular vacation. Pictures can capture all those things. We might particularly think of events like birthdays. Lorraine was extending our birthday wishes this morning and I was Part of an email chain at the end of it for an interesting birthday that I didn't know about. Clap your hands if you know who Gus is. All right, okay, you're good, you're good. So I understand that Gus the turtle is a hundred years old. Can you imagine that? We'll see if we can find some photos this week and put Gus up into a little spiritual care. There's other things we take photos of, graduations, weddings, baby pictures, first days of school, all those things. Those photos tell lots of stories. They collect our memories. And we think about people who are important to us. In our scripture story today, we hear from the book of Hebrews about people in different situations. Some of them, the writer tells us of names, some not. If it were a photo album, it would be showing people of faith. Do you remember the story of those crossing over the Red Sea? Rahab, who welcomed the scouts. Remember those who marched on Jericho? Remember Samson and Daniel, who shut the mouths of lions? Characters like Gideon and Esther, who find themselves feeling strong in difficult times. We're reminded of so many characters in the stories. And some of the stories 
are very difficult and sad. Some people being teased and bullied, and some even killed. And that sounds pretty difficult, doesn't it? As we look at our own family albums, you probably heard stories about them, maybe even of members who've gone through difficult times. Or maybe it's funny stories you hear. Remember the time when, and when you're big, you'll hear those stories again and again. We read about the different people in the Bible stories, about people who are family, friends, we are connected. The stories are important. I had a couple of ideas this week of what we could be thinking about, and I couldn't pick, so you're getting both. My first idea is, can you imagine right now, picture in your mind, your favorite teacher, someone who helped you feel good about who you are, Maybe you'll have one teacher that really stands out. Hopefully, you'll have many. What is it about them that stands out for you? The second thing is to grab some of those photo albums or just even have a conversation with a loved one about the people and ask them to tell you a story about someone from your family, even themselves, that you've not maybe heard before. And I invite you this week to connect with me this week and tell me what you did to connect with a memory. Let's talk to God now in our repeating prayer. I'll say the words first and you say them after me. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for our family and friends. Thank you for stories of different people. Thank you for all the ways we learn. Help us to be kind friends. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite us now to say together the words of the prayer Jesus taught his friends to say as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our next hymn this morning is, Take My Life and Let It Be, Voices United. 506. Words are also on the screen.
about people and how important they are to us. Even though we ourselves might be looked up to by others, considered a model, a mentor, a role model, the truth is that we are really hard on ourselves sometimes. We sometimes don't even really like ourselves very much and get upset with our own bodies. Kate Bolar, a theologian and author who faced stage four cancer, wrote a letter to her own body. And I'm going to share an excerpt from her book that as our contemporary reading this morning. Perhaps you can relate to Kate. Dear body, sometimes I hate you. You get tired sooner than I'd like to admit. You wake me in the night for no good reason. Your cells duplicate at unpredictable rates. New gray hairs and fine lines and silver stretch marks show up from nowhere. You let me down just when I need you the most. Sometimes I want a break from living with you. I prefer to trade you in for a newer model, a model that isn't in constant pain, that fits better in that pair of jeans and has more energy. With you, I am limited, bound by skin and bone and thinning hair. With you, I am fragile. But God knows what it's like to live in flesh. God too lived in a body. God knows the ache of growing pains, the feeling of goosebumps on a brisk day, and the comfort of a warm embrace. He felt the gurgle of a hungry stomach and the annoying prick of a splinter after a day of hard work. He wept over the death of a friend. Ours is a God who sneezed and rubbed his eyes when he was sleepy. Ours is a God who knew with longing, heartbreak, excitement, frustration, the full range of what it means to be human and live in a body. So when my own body drags me down, my muscles ache, when my worries keep me up at night, when my fear for the future leaves me emotionless, when I feel lonely and exhausted and burdened. I do not worship a God who is far off. This is a God who knows my humanity inside and out. God has counted every hair on my head and bottled up every tear I have shed. Not simply because the word formed us, knit us together in our mother's womb, was there from the very beginning, but because God wore our skin. Dear, dear body, I get it, or at least I'm starting to. You do not have an unlimited supply. You run out, and I need to listen. Maybe I really should go to bed a little earlier, or let you off the hook for craving those extra salty chips. I need to sense when you are struggling and gently acknowledge that you are actually changing, that time and love and grief and life have worn themselves into my skin. Day by day, this is the beautiful, terrible evidence that we have lived. May these words resonate in our heart and connect us more deeply 
with our loving God. Turning to our scriptures, today we are reading from the letter of Hebrews. And in today's text, we read of the great cloud of witnesses who lived by faith. We are given the image of being in a race, not a short one, but more like a marathon. Our lifelong, faithful walk, roll, and movement through life. The discipline of the long distance race. Furain will be reading from the Hebrews passage beginning at chapter 11, verse 29, through chapter 12, verse 2, and he is reading today from the message. Offered as wisdom for the journey. 
May we walk in his light. Thank you, Vrain. That seems kind of heavy for a summer day or any day, but the Revised Common Lectionary, it just tells us to think about and draw more deeply in. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts bring you praise. Still us to know that we belong. Help us to trust. Help us to value story, our own true story. Guide us faithfully in our enduring journey and in the marathon of life. Open us to what we need to receive from you. Amen. When the Olympics were held in Barcelona, Spain in 1992, something unexpected happened, as it often does in life moments. A young man named Derek Redman had dreamed all his life of winning a gold medal. In the 400 meter race, he worked hard to get to the Olympics and his dream was within his reach. He was in the semifinals as was running the race of his life. He could see the finish line just ahead as he made that final turn. Can you picture the end of a race in your mind? Suddenly, Derek felt a sharp pain in the back of his leg and he fell to the track with a torn muscle in his right leg. Derek struggled to his feet and began to hop on one foot towards the finish line in his attempt to finish the race. Suddenly a large man came out of the stands, pushed aside the security guard and ran to Derek's side. It was Derek's father, Jim Redman. You don't have to do this, he told his son. Yes, I do, said Derek. Well then, said his father, we're going to finish this together. And they did. They stayed in Derek's lane all the way to the end. At first, the crowd watched in silence. Then they rose to their feet and cheered and wept. Derek Redman didn't win the gold medal, but he walked away with the incredible memory of a loving parent who, when he saw his son in pain, left a seat in the stands to help him finish the race. Now, likely we're not Olympic contenders. We don't experience life-changing moments usually in front of worldwide media, nor do we usually want our personal stories exposed, but we need stories. Commentary writer Mary Foskett writes, in our high-tech age, when the art of conversation has been waning, our hunger for stories has only grown. If book sales are a reliable indication, especially we long for the stories of ordinary people who share from the depths of their hearts and their lives all the complexities of being human. We want to hear the stories of others because in them we recognize our own experience and discover a greater sense of belonging. In today's reading, the writer of the letter to the Hebrews addresses a community needing to hear that it belongs. The list of names clearly intended to inspire and encourage the readers, the listeners, 
who surely would have recalled the stories of all the relevant figures. In all their complexities, they would relate. It is because of their faith alone that the writer sees each of them, these flawed and messy human beings, as righteous. Not all of the stories to which the writer reviews are easily traced or identified. It's not clear who specifically was stoned to death, who he meant when he spoke about being sawed in two or killed by a sword. The figures themselves are left unnamed, making it clear that what the letter seeks to convey is the accelerating impact of recounting the many who endured great suffering because of their faith. They become the norm, not the exception. Commentator Amy Peeler writes of this passage, from the miraculous to the macabre. The faithful of Israel's past provide the encouragement that this Hebrew congregation needs to keep running their own race of faith. Endurance consistently features throughout the epistle to the Hebrews. This author passionately desires for its audience to hold fast, to endure, to remain strong to the end. Life is like a race that has been set before us. We may struggle and face many obstacles, but we have a great crowd of witnesses who are cheering us on. We do have a love-hate thing going on with our own bodies and our sense of self, but we know we have people who love us and we know God loves us so simple but so profound that we have to keep being reminded we look to Jesus and the many stories in the Bible and the people in our lives who remind us that all of the people that we pass by those we do or don't connect with or don't seem to our family our friends our co-workers you know, even though we connect or we see them or we pass by hardly noticing at all, all these people have stories and we don't know their story. It's too easy to put on a game face, a literal and figurative mask. But sometimes we do find we are humbled to receive or even help carry the stories of another, like vessels of trust. We feel the gift. It's all the more precious for having been trusted with the vulnerability. Accompanying a person in their pain, in their sense of weakness and vulnerability, but looking to ourselves, we're still more likely to put up a shield, not wanting to let others in. Sometimes we don't even know why we believe the stories that we're telling ourselves about ourselves. We've just somehow come to believe it. It might have been a teacher not on our favorite list who said something said something about the way we learned or the way we worked and we held it. It might be bullies from the schoolyard and we held on to or believed it. It might have been the discomforting friends who in a weak moment wanting to puff themselves up said something that we just can't let go of. We've come to believe stories, but it's time to ask ourselves, 
What of those difficult stories that we believe about ourselves must we challenge? Sometimes we get confused. We put ourselves down instead of speaking those affirmations of love and kindness. We say things to ourselves that we would never say to other people. We don't share our stories because we're afraid, afraid that we'll be judged. But all the while, we are being the very worst judge of ourselves. Like Kate Bowler's letter to her body, we are so hard on ourselves. My son-in-law always says, people are just people. Reflecting on your own sense of self, is there something that you need to stop saying to yourself? Or reframe and start saying something new to yourself again? Cliff shared with me this week a heart beautiful story that turned heart hurting. While gardening, he observed what appeared to be a young mum, possibly with a grandparent, and a young boy learning to ride his first two-wheeler with training wheels. As the adult offered encouragement, the little one got loud, wanting to go to the park. He was told they would go to the park after finishing the ride. The child yelled out, you're a bad mother. Why? Why such hurtful words? What had that little one heard before? All this in the length of the property frontage. What would you say or do? If that were a photo moment, how will that story be captured and remembered? Building further on that photo album idea that we spoke about earlier, commentator Brian Whitfield writes about this passage in Hebrews. As we look at this remarkable family, the writer of Hebrew sketches, we discover two portraits of faith. One portrait is the image of triumph conquering enemies, obtaining promises, shutting the mouths of lions, even gaining victory over death. But the other portrait is filled with images of suffering, public mocking, imprisonment, beating, stoning, homelessness, violence, and death. From the outside, the pictures and images are radically different, impossible to reconcile. After all, our culture says we are either successes or failures, but the writer of Hebrews mixes the categories. The mixing of suffering and triumph gives us a word of hope. Faithfulness shines both in suffering and in triumph, both in sorrow and in joy. So we learn that faith endures, faith trusts God's premises and promises, sorry, even when the culture calls these promises into question. In the face of suffering, faith holds on and holds out because of the certainty of a future in which God has something better in store. Such are the lessons from our family photo album. Remember our company. We are not alone. Remember our company, but we also remember our contests. We have a race to run. We're not mere tourists in this world, 
wandering from place to place taking pictures, visiting landmarks and writing postcards, and then cheerily returning to the safety of home. We are runners in a race, not a 50-yard dash, but a marathon. What do we do when it doesn't appear to be enough? What if, despite a cloud of witnesses, despite the cheering section, despite our perseverance and sacrifice, we don't feel like we can hold out? We don't know if we can make it to the end. The writer to the Hebrews has fought one additional word of advice on this. There is one more photograph for us to see. The final and most important one of all. Let us run the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Pioneer translates the, from the particularly rich Greek word archigos. The archigos is the author, the beginner, the instigator, the impetus, the trailblazer who goes before us. Jesus has been the scout, blazing a trail through all of human existence, tested in every way like all of us, yet finding joy at the end of the suffering of the cross. And there's more. In the context of a race, the Archigos is the team captain. In the Greek games, the team captain would run the race and then wait at the finish line to encourage his teammates as they followed Yet Jesus is not simply the pioneer. Jesus is also the perfecter. When we think of these images and the ideas that Whitfield has presented, we get more powerful energy for us to lean into. When we're feeling our bodies are letting us down, when our season of life is difficult. We are always walking in the footsteps of Jesus. It is the race of following the example that Jesus set before us and expects us to follow as his disciples. It is a race of obedience to God, faithfulness to Jesus' call in our hearts, Jesus called to each one of us, follow me. By faith, Jesus has done the race, led the race, endured everything, and is cheering us along. Whatever you're facing, look, feel, experience Jesus calling to you. These are photo ops. We belong. We will endure Faithfully, I will walk the race with you, and you walk the race with me. We keep our focus on Jesus. May it be so. Thanks be to God, and amen.
Let us pray. Holy and awesome wonder, thank you for the people and stories that have shaped heroes, mentors, clouds of witness and presence. Guide our steps and equip us for the race. Creator for the moments when alone or with those we love or in great crowds that we just feel so connected with you. Help us get caught up in the wonder, in the awe that is you. Holy friend, for the times when we have come together and feel our hearts blend as one family in worship, we give thanks for faith, for all that grows and is nurtured in the community of faith. Comforter and sustainer for the times when we face endings and beginnings. Touched by your holy presence, we are forever blessed. Help us, O Lord, to make the kinds of commitments which will bring healing and hope in this troubled world. Help us to be gentle and accepting of our bodies to take care and prioritize our own needs. Help us to appreciate all people and connect with the true stories of ourselves and others, reminding us we are not alone. We belong and to know that people are just people. We thank you for nourishment of our bodies, protection, from the elements, safety. Help us to extend our hands, our feet, our voices, our hearts, to live our faith, to be forgiving, to connect with those on the margins, those in any kind of prison, struggling. Open us to the ministries, the ministries you set before us as we live our lives each and every day, working for justice, nourishment, and protection for all. Show us when we are trying to be too much in control ourselves, to have our focus on stuff and things and our own needs and wants. Help us to balance what it is to be selfish and selfless for the highest and best good. Allow your fires to burn within us, cleansing waters to pour your love on us, to challenge us, nourish us, and energize us to your call to serve. In thanksgiving, O oh God, we lift up to you situations, needs, people, the joys cares and concerns from the silence of our hearts. Spirit, move within us and fill us with your grace. Grant us courage to faithfully serve you always. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And our next hymn today is May the God of Hope Go With Us, Voices United, 424, on the screen and in the hymn book.
go now in peace. And I share these words that were used to close our worship throughout General Council 44. With a deep spirituality, be brave, be loved. In bold discipleship, be blessed, be loved. For daring justice, be bold, be loved. Be gods, be brave. Be Christ, you bold. And be the spirits, be blessed. God bless you, and amen.